I know you've heard this said before, but I think I want to share it with you because it bears repeating. Great things come to those who wait. <laughs> Yep, sometimes progress or possession of promises requires patience. But it's one thing to know that I need to wait or that I need to have patience. It's another thing to learn how to actually have it. All right, so in this video, I want to teach you three keys to becoming a more patient person. <laughs> So I was reading this book recently, right, and I came across this quote inside of it, and it really kind of rocked my world in a sense. I want to share it with you. It's a quote on patience, and this is what the guy said. He said, almost every unkind word we've spoken or unwise decision we made could have been avoided or dramatically reduced if we had been more patient. Say it again. Almost every unkind word we've spoken or unwise decision we've made could have been avoided or dramatically reduced if we had been more patient. And when I look back over my life, I'm like, yeah, that kind of resonates with me. There's a scripture in Proverbs that says, he who acts impulsively exalts folly. It means that my likelihood of making decisions that are unwise, unhelpful, unhealthy increases when I'm acting impulsively. And I believe that it is key and critical for anyone who wants to progress, who wants to walk in purpose, who wants to reach and to maximize their potential, to develop this attitude of patience. Now, when I say patience, I think it probably conjures up a number of different thoughts. When I say patience, guys, I'm not talking about emotion. I don't think patience is an emotion. I think patience is more of an attitude. Patience is the ability to arrest the impulse to act impatiently while dealing with the frustration of being delayed. I'm going to say that again. Patience is the ability to arrest the impulse to act impatiently while dealing with the frustration of, of being delayed. It's an attitude that acknowledges I'm agitated by having to wait, but I refuse to act out of my agitation. I don't know about you, but if I'm in the airport and my flight's delayed, I'm agitated. Yeah, I want to go home. <laughs> I want to go home. <laughs> I want to go home. Yeah, I want to go home. So I'm not going to try to fix that feeling. I'm agitated. I want to go home. And sometimes we want what we want, and we want it when we want it. So being patient isn't like eliminating that feeling. But being patient is saying, it's, an, it's developing an attitude that acknowledges how you feel, but refuses to act out of those feelings. It doesn't deny what you want. It knows what you want and knows that you want it now. But it's a commitment to say, I refuse to act unwisely and impulsively to get it. Because almost every unkind word we've spoken or unwise decision we made could have been avoided or dramatically reduced if we had been more patient. So here's the key question. The question is how? How do we become more patient? Well, I want to give you three keys. Because, because I believe there are keys that unlock the door to greater patience. And with what God is going to do in your life, I'm telling you, it's going to, it's going to require some patience. Because some things are going to come much sooner than you expect, and some things are going to come much, <laughs> it's going to take much longer than you anticipate. So greater patience on the back end means some greater things on the front end. Practically, what does that mean? If I'm going to have greater patience, I need greater faith. That's the first thing. Greater patience requires greater faith. And when I say greater faith, this is what I mean. I don't mean bigger faith, because the scriptures teach, if I got faith the size of a mustard seed, 
I can move mountains. So the question isn't, right, how big my faith is. I'm not talking about big faith. I'm talking about broad faith, right? Abraham is called a man of faith, yet Abraham struggled with patience. We know he struggled with patience because when it was taking God what well, Abraham to be in, believed to be an extended period of time for Abraham and his wife Sarah to conceive and give birth to Isaac. Uh, Abraham and Sarah came up with this, concocted this plan with Hagar, and as a result of that, they ended up with Ishmael. And Ishmael is the evidence of, it is the fruit of impatience. It's what you get when you don't wait. So how can, how can a man of faith, but Abraham's called a father of faith, yet he still struggled with patience? Because there's a difference between strong faith and long faith. So sometimes the question isn't how big can I believe? Sometimes the question is how long can I believe? And can I keep on believing when it seems like believing isn't working? Here's one of my favorite scriptures, guys. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36. You need to persevere so that when you've done the will of God, you will receive what is promised. Here's one translation. You have need of patience so that after you've done the will of God, you receive what he's promised. So the writer's saying, I need patience because I'm going <laughs> to, because there's going to be a time period between me accomplishing the will and him bringing manifestation into my life. So he says, I need patience there. So I can't have greater patience if I'm not developing greater faith. And faith only comes by me inundating myself with the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So here's my question for you. What's your word regiment like? This is why we're dropping content on YouTube every single day, because you need some sort of spiritual brainwashing every single day. I don't mean brainwashing like in a cult religious sense. I mean like brainwashing like the Bible uses this, uses this phrase to describe, to describe what the word does for us. It says we need, the, we need the washing of the water of the word. It's like the word gives you a mind bath. Like all week, we're inundated with negativity and cynicism and bad news and just all sorts of things that, that can suffocate our zeal and zest. And what we need is the Word of God to wash our brains of that. Because greater patience requires greater faith. Here's the second one. Greater patience requires greater faithfulness. It's one thing to have faith. It's another thing to have faithfulness, consistency reliability and unwillingness to quit. A willingness to do the right thing be over an extended period of time because you still believe the right thing will work even though it doesn't seem like the right thing is working. Faithfulness. And here's the last one. If we're going to have greater patience, we're going to need greater focus. This is, this one, here, here, here's my favorite definition of focus. Selective attention. This means you get to select what you give your attention to. Think about that. It's powerful. It's like when you go to the, I think the eye doctor is like the optometrist. I think that's an, it's like, so when you go to the optometrist and then they're checking your eyes, right? They may give you five rows of letters. You can see that. Vision allows you to see to some degree all five, but then they'll tell you, hey, I want you to read line three or line four. So to read line three or line four, you have to focus on line three or line four. It means that you're making a decision to select what you will look at and give your attention to and what you will not look at and give your attention to. And when it comes to greater patience, we need greater focus. Why? It means that there are some things we have to decide. I'm not going to look at that. I'm not going to look at that. The Bible talks about this concept in language that describes what we look at. Uh, Psalms 121.1, 1, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from 
the Lord. He says, I'm going to choose what I'm going to look at or listen to or give my attention to. I need focus. And if I would develop greater faith, greater faithfulness, and greater focus, I can develop greater patience. And when you got patience, patience pays you with peace. And it's time for you to get paid. All right, here's to becoming a more patient person. Take care.